We've been talking a lot about local linearity, linearization, linear approximations, whatever term you want to use for them. And before we move on, I have a few more things that I want to say about them. So let's first talk about linear, local, linear approximations. Let's talk about linear approximations. Linear approximations just for a little bit. So in a math textbook, in a math textbook, you might see the following. You might see something like this. For x values near x naught, f of x, f of x is going to be approximately f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. And really what this is, it might be a little weird notation to you, but this is exactly what we've been dealing with. This right-hand side here is a tangent line, and that tangent line is for this function, at, and it's going to be based at x is equal to x naught. And then you use this tangent line that you've created in order to approximate values of this function. And it's going to be accurate for x values near x naught. That's all this is saying here, and this is exactly what we've been dealing with. And maybe if that's not sitting so well with you, we could even derive this from the equation of a line. So we could write this point slope form, y minus y naught is equal to m times x minus x naught. It's just point slope form of a line, and we want to discuss this in terms of a tangent line. So we can let y be equal to f of x, and then y naught it's going to be equal to f of x naught. And then m, because we're making a tangent line, is the derivative at x naught. So then rewriting this under this notation here and solving for f of x, we get the following. f of x is equal to f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. And again, this is just a tangent line. This is a tangent line for our function at x is equal to x naught. That's where it's based at. And how we make this jump, again, we're just using a tangent line up here with a linear approximation to, est to approximate, estimate values of our function. And it's only going to be somewhat accurate for x values near where we based our tangent line. That's all it's saying. And why would we want to use a linear approximation? Well, there are some pretty tricky functions out there. And if we can work with a line instead, that would be nicer. So that's why we use one. And maybe we could even simplify this notation a little more, make it a little more concrete. So we could do it for x values near zero. And then under this notation, it would be f of x is, e is approximately, is approximately, not equals, approximately f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x. So that's a little more concrete. I hope you feel good about that notation. We're going to bring it up a little later in this video. But before we move on here, let's, let's use what we've learned about linear approximations, maybe give you some more practice. Why don't you find the linear approximation of, I have cosine of x graphed over here. Why don't you find the linear approximation of cosine of x? for x values near zero. All right, assuming that you've given it a go, well, let's do that, let's do that. So we want to, we're going to let f of x now be equal to cosine of x, cosine of x, and we want to make a linear approximation for x values near zero. So this is going to be cosine of x, is going to be approximately, cosine of zero is one, plus the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x evaluated at zero is going to just be zero. So we find our linear approximation of cosine of x for x values near zero is the line y is equal to one. And graphing that, we just get this up here. So that's our, that's our linear approximation. y is equal to one. And again, if we were to use this and say, oh, well, let's see, uh, cosine of, let's figure out what cosine of one half is off of this linear approximation. So this will be our linear approximation for cosine of one half. And it says that this is going to be approximately one. But let's just see how accurate that is. Let's, let's test it against a calculator. So what does the calculator have to say about cosine of one half? Let's see. Let's see, 
cosine of one half on a calculator is is 0.87, let's round this, so 0.878. So it's gonna be approximately, our calculator says, has a little different story, that this is approximately 0.878. So you can see our linear approximation is off. It is not, it is not great. And then we get to this question, okay, we have this one tool to approximate our function, but can we do better? Because obviously this is not great, you can see that. So can we do better than a linear approximation? That's the question we want to answer. Can we do better? Can we do better? And uh, to answer that, I mean, we can kind of look at this graph and see what something, what a better approximation would look like. We have this, we have our linear approximation, but this graph of cosine, I mean, it would be really nice. I mean, it, it kind of has the shape where we could, wouldn't it be nice if we could use a parabola instead of a line to approximate cosine? Because if we used a parabola, it would look something like this. Look something like, like this. And you can see that seems to do a way better job of approximating cosine than our line does. So uh, what do we call this? Is, does this exist? And yes, it does. And that's what the rest of this video is going to be on. It's using this, uh, this approximation is called a quadratic approximation. A quadratic approximation. Approximation. And a quadratic approximation, I want to just give you the formula for it right off the bat using some of this notation we talked about in the beginning. And then I will try to give you some intuition on why it works. So this is going to be for x, for x values near x naught. We say that f of x is approximately f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught plus f double prime. So our second derivative at x naught over 2 times x minus x naught squared. So this might look really intimidating off the bat here, but we already know piece, uh, a piece of this. And we know this first part here. We know this first part here. What is this? This is our linear approximation. This is our linear approximation. This first part of the quadratic approximation is actually our linear approximation. So that's pretty cool. And what's new here is the second derivative information. And you might think, okay, that, that makes sense. I, I can see that happening. But I really don't get the two. And I would be right there with you. I think I thought the same thing when I first learned this. Why in the world is that two there? That seems to come out of nowhere. And in order to show you, give you some intuition on why that needs to be there, we are going to do the following. We are going to use a quadratic approximation to approximate a quadratic. And that is going to show us why that two needs to be there. So we're going to, we're going to have our function be a standard quadratic. So ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we're going to make a quadratic approximation for this function for x values near zero, for x values near zero. And let's do that. So we need to find the first derivative evaluated at zero and the second derivative evaluated at zero. So our first derivative is going to be 2ax. And then our second derivative, our second derivative is going to be 2a. 2a. Oh, our first derivative. Our first derivative is 2ax plus b. That's a mistake there. Okay, so now we need to evaluate all of these at 0. So we have f of 0 is going to be c, and then f prime at 0 is going to be b, and then f double prime, our second derivative evaluated at 0, is 2a. So now let me grab some more space. And what we're going to do is just fill in and use our quadratic approximation formula. So we find that for x values near zero, that f of x, again, our f of x is this standard quadratic function that it is going to be approximately f of zero, f of zero is c plus f 
prime. Remember, wherever, wherever you see an x naught, we are replacing with zero here. So f prime of zero is b times x plus f double prime of zero is 2a over 2 times x squared. Cleaning this up, we have that this is approximately c plus, ooh, let me rewrite it. Maybe this will make it a little more obvious here. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So you can see that our quadratic approximation of our quadratic is actually what our function is. And that better be the case because if we're taking a quadratic approximation of a quadratic, this formula would be no good if we didn't get the same quadratic out. So hopefully you can see that when we did this, that is why that two needs to exist so that we ensure we get that quadratic out of our quadratic approximation. So hopefully that can give you some intuition on why that needs to exist, but now I want to apply it. I want to come back over here into our little competition for cosine of one half. So why don't you use this quadratic approximation formula to make a quadratic approximation for cosine of x at x value for x values near zero. All right, assuming that you've given it a go, let's do that. Let's find the quadratic approximation for cosine of x. So this is going to be for x values near zero, and we are going to let f of x now be cosine of x, and then let me grab some more space. So let's just fill in what we have. So we have cosine of x is going to be approximately, and again, this first part is a linear approximation. We already found that. So this is 1 plus 0x, if you want to put that in there, and then we have plus Plus, now we need our second derivative information. So first derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Taking the derivative of negative sine of x, we are going to have negative cosine of x, negative cosine of x. Evaluating that at zero, it's going to be negative one. So we have negative one, and then that is gonna be over two times x squared, times x squared. So we find that this is one minus x squared over two. That's our quadratic approximation for cosine of x for x values near zero. And then we want to come back up, come back up here and talk about how our quadratic approximation does against our calculator. So cosine of one half, we have now entered the race here and let's see how good we do against the calculator. So cosine of one half is under our quadratic approximation, it's going to be one minus one half squared one fourth over two is one eighth. So this is one minus one eighth, which is seven eighths. And moment of truth here. Let's see what seven eighths is. Let's see, let's see. Seven eighths is 0 0.875, 0 0.875. So this is 0 0.875. So again, you can see, can we do better? You betcha. We, our quadratic approximation did pretty good up against our calculator for cosine of one half. So now we have another tool to approximate values of a function that is more accurate than a linear approximation. And we'll continue working with quadratic approximations in the upcoming videos.